So it's funny, like when you asked what was my favorite thing I've destroyed, and my first thought was like, I don't know. But now that you mentioned, you know, disintegrating things, uh, it jogged my memory. So probably like one of the my favorite ones was the uh, the chicken in piranha because it just like we took a like a chicken drumstick, I guess, put it in hot piranha, which is a mixture of sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide. And it kind of just I think it was in like two minutes. It was just gone, which I didn't even think it was going to do that. So that shocked me. So I was very I was impressed by what it was able to do. Um, and, oh, and also we dissolved I, years ago I probably, in my parents backyard. I dissolved uh, a hot dog. That was the first <laughs> time I I destroyed something with uh, piranha. And then I did it again later for uh, a short. So probably like just dissolving and destroying food. Um, and then maybe when I was younger, I blew a lot of stuff up with firecrackers. But <laughs> I kind of uh, I don't know. One day I just kind of got scared of firecrackers and I stopped working with explosives altogether. Uh, I think the idea is fun, but I don't know. The, da- the danger factor is less fun. And I'm not really like super. Uh, I don't feel like I'm super qualified to be handling a lot of explosive stuff, <laughs> which is why it's I don't. expected too. Yeah. Sorry? I mean, when you have it, it, it's like the result, you see it coming when there's some kind of explosive, like there's no element of of surprise or coolness, mm. a, a really big or powerful explosion or something is neat. I mean, when when mm. I was a kid, I used to buy cap gun rolls of caps at <laughs> at uh, a store in town and then hit them with hammers to to explode rocks yeah. you know like yeah like a like a, an extremely primitive mining operation i like that uh, but i knew it was going to happen that's why i did it right there was never once anything that was at all surprising and you're talking about food disintegrating i mean even if you know it's going to disintegrate Nobody knows what what that's going to look like or what it's going to feel like to watch food disappear because we don't see that anywhere else. Yeah, that's true. Like when I did the the chicken one, I thought it was going to be like in a cartoon where, you know, you they put whatever. Probably, yeah, in some sort. I'm sure I've seen a cartoon when I was younger where someone fell in acid and they came out and they were just bones or something. That's what I <laughs> yeah. thought was going to happen. I thought it was just going to be left with a bone, but then it dissolved the bone as well. So then that actually did really surprise me. Wasn't that the plot of Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Wasn't there like a, a, a acidic goop or something that they were going to dunk all of the tunes into to murder them all? Oh, Which is yeah. so grim now thinking about it. It's kind of an insanely morbid thing. But I'm pretty sure uh, if anybody's watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I think that was sort of the big danger that Christopher Lloyd or whoever... Mm was trying to disintegrate cartoon <laughs> characters <laughs> in I acid. Was, I don't remember exactly the story because I watched it so long ago, but I do remember, yeah, it was definitely a uh, a pretty morbid, <laughs> something morbid going on. <laughs> What's it feel like to know that if Jeffrey Dahmer had watched your videos, he would have never been caught? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's like, that's the one thing. It's like, you mean in terms of like the dissolving things in acid? Yeah, yeah, he would have, he would have just like, upped his game to a point where <laughs> it's so like i mean so to to discourage people of trying to dispose of bodies using the uh the videos that i've made <laughs> the piranha releases just a lot of gas and it's like okay. since it's hot acid and peroxide if you don't have a fume hood it'll fill the room mm. and you'll start choking and you'll your eyes will burn like you can't really okay. just do it indoors and then on a scale scale. you know from a a drumstick to like a full person it's just the amount of all the supplies you need would be insane and it would just probably i i bet like there's no way people would not be running out of the at at least some part of the apartment people would be leaving because their eyes are burning and they're they're, someone's calling 911 like it it would actually be really it would it would alert people if you tried to do it that way I suppose you'd have to have a seriously industrial setup to to deal with anything on scale. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, exactly. And then once you have that, it's like, I don't know what you're doing if you're that set up to be to be dealing with those kinds of things. (laughs) I don't know. I'd like to stay on this topic because you see you see that (laughs) as a thing in, in movies, right, where the mob or some superhero villain Mm. or something, they'll dispose of bodies this way but is this is this one of those things that we can kind of debunk here that in order to actually do that you would need some really advanced 
uh, hood system or filtration system, air filtration. Like what? You can't just dump them into a barrel and close the barrel, right? Would it explode? What, what would happen? So I guess the question is like what you're using to dispose of. I mean, <laughs> so more of it. Yeah. If, you, if you're if you trying to dispose of a body, like what would you do? I think piranha, it's, it's kind of like flashy because things disappear so quickly. But the downside, like I said, is it produces just fumes. It's dangerous. I don't even know where you get that much peroxide. Sulfuric acid might be easier, but it's like, even just getting everything, you probably, because peroxide's used to make explosives and other things. So it's like, if you buy that much peroxide, I think you just go on a list somewhere. <laughs> so it's like, it's not, it's not something that you're really going to be, uh, like you're going to be raising red flags with just your purchase in general. So it's like, you have to then, you have to somehow buy a lot of chemicals without anyone thinking it's weird. Um, and I feel like there's pretty standard things that I've read online where people say like, just a vat of lye or something. So just like drain cleaner, basically, I feel like something like that is probably I think people do actually do that. I don't I don't have any idea, but like that will get rid of all they, the fleshy yeah. part. But you'll still be left with a bunch of bones. You have to like, I don't know what you do with that. They can get away with with procuring some of those basic things because they have normal farm applications. Yes. You know, things like big orders of lime and lye and all of that. Yes, I mean, it, that yeah. that no, that totally is viable. But like I said, if you I think I think. I could be totally wrong, but I think if you do soak an animal or something in lye, I think the bones aren't really attacked by it. I could be wrong. Hmm. Also, one other thing I should mention about the piranha is it has to be really hot, too. So the piranha is probably oh. like 200 C or more. I don't know what it actually is. Oh, so it's spicy. like you'd have to have that much acid and peroxide and it has to be really hot as well. <laughs> uh, I, I think at the end of the day, if you have a body, it's going to be... Uh, you, that's that's your just you already have a major issue and <laughs> yeah. it's just like what's the least bad solution there's no real like ideal way that you're just going to be able to uh to escape that problem mm. <laughs> rolling it up in a in a rug and dumping it into the harbor <laughs> well i think actually like the one the one thing i saw i used to watch when i edited videos i used to watch um, a lot of criminal court things um, where they would just mm -hmm. start from like the crime and go. It was like real court cases. You'd see the whatever, the trial and everything. And the guys who got who actually like basically got away with it every time, they didn't do anything crazy. They just literally drove out into the desert and just buried the body somewhere. And the desert's yeah. just so big that they just you just don't have the manpower to find anybody. So I it's just it, like I think it's like anything else, like if even if you're cooking a meal, the more mm. complicated you try to make it, the, you know, the worse it's going to be. Like <laughs> the best thing you can do is like pan fry a steak, you yeah. know, and keep it simple. Well, that's the thing. Like they're like the guy just drove out I, whoever they murdered, just dumped them, d dug a hole, dumped them in the desert. And even though the prosecutors knew that they were like 900 percent sure that the guy did it, they're like, we have no body. Like we don't like he claimed that she just disappeared and never came back. And they're like, we can't prove that wrong. Yeah. So it's just like, and his entire big operation was just, <laughs> wasn't very complex. There was no like buying chemicals or doing anything crazy. Right. <laughs> Isn't that what they did in Breaking Bad? I'm pretty sure just burying the bodies in the desert was what they did in Breaking maybe, Bad. Maybe, yeah. So maybe they watched, I mean, As they watched the same like, show that I did. Like um, Dexter, who mm. would put them in oh, yeah. garbage bags and then take them out to the to the water and dump them See, out from his they, boat. They, even in the show, the bodies came back and then he had a problem. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. But I guess it's like you also have to have a convenient desert or large amount of wilderness. <laughs> like the desert's convenient because you can drive over it. Whereas like if I oh, where yeah. I live, there's a lot of forested area. You can't just I mean, you're not going to drag a body like 50 kilometers <laughs> up, a, up a small mountain. Uh, yeah. So it's just like if you don't I guess if you don't have a, a desert around you, maybe just uh, don't murder people. <laughs> that, that's, that's the that's the takeaway. Yeah, <laughs> no, that makes sense, though. I, I didn't think that you could just drive extremely far and remote on in a desert the way. Yeah, you can't do that in a forest. I mean, no. if you had an ATV, it seems like you could go pretty far in the woods. 
But it's cold. I mean, the things don't decompose at, at you know, the same rate the further north you go. Oh. I, I, mean, mm. I think the desert offers a, <laughs> a, a really nice decompositional advantage here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it just breaks <laughs> it down really quick, too. That makes a lot of sense. At least, at least quicker than the tundra. <laughs> you know, but I, I where, feel like the, <laughs> the idea is like if you just bury them and no one ever finds it, it doesn't really matter if they ever. Actually, that's not true because I did see another. I think one of the other things was. Um, the body took forever to break down and then like, you know, an animal digs it up and then somehow yeah. the bones surface and now there's a whole investigation because some hiker found something. Yeah. So maybe the, some, some the, the coyote de- dug up a femur. Yeah. The desert is key. 